So, John, please tell me, how do I know this is done so that I can start chilling it and clarifying it? So one of the really key indicators here is to look at the sediment bottle down below. And what you're looking for in the sediment bottle is basically no activity. You'll see a very large bed of yeast. But if there is activity, there's little trails of bubbles and yeast bombs that kind of drop off the bottom. It's almost like looking at something from another world, right? Or when it stops, it's a great indication. The other thing that you can do, if you think it's done, you can just take a little bit of pressure out. I'm just about to do that now, right? It drops the pressure gauge down. So we've just dropped from about 1.4 down to 1.1. And if I look at that the next morning and it's still at 1.1, we're done. If it's back at 1.4, I know that, yep, no, there's still something going on, I'm, I'm going to leave it. The big question though is, how long does it take to do this? Two key variables are, are the type of yeast. Some yeasts start quicker and are more voracious. Uh, and also the temperature. So yeasts like warmer temperatures generally. I mean, we talk about lager yeasts being happy with slightly lower temperatures. But the general rule of thumb is that if you are brewing in warmer temperatures, uh, you, can, you will brew quicker than if you're brewing in cooler temperatures. And the range I'm talking about there is... The difference between brewing at maybe 18 to 20 versus 23 to 25. So there's a bit of a process you're going to talk me through. How do I get, how do I get the clarification agent in here? Yep. But before I clarify though, I have to cool this down. Why? Uh, because the clarification agent works really well at cooler temperatures. You start to get certain um, protein breaks occurring in the beer. They clump together and the clarification agent at co cooler temperatures just starts to drop those out. This is nicely chilled, and I want to get going with my clarification. What do I need to do that? Uh, three things, Hendrik. You need a gas cylinder with a connection. You need your dosing device, and you need your clarification agent. How much clarification agent do I have for this? So for a 10-litre brew keg, um, we generally recommend you do two clarifications. The first one is 15 mils of this liquid, and then the second one, which typically can be about 12 hours later, is 10 mils. Good. So I think you've got a neat little little measurement device on your anyway. Yep. Okay, so let's get going, Mark. All right, where are we? 10, 15 mils on the knocker. 15 mils on the knocker, we got it. Yep. So we give we that, make that nice and I'll, tight. I'll we know that this beer, and I've actually just taken a little bit of pressure out of it before, it's down at just above one bar of pressure. In order to push this through, we need to be at higher than one bar of pressure, otherwise it's not going to go anywhere. So effectively you've got the higher pressure going by the uh, dosing device into your keg, and that way this liquid is going to be pushed out. Now, here's something I learned the hard way. This is black, and you're putting gas through. Black is for beer. Yeah, I try to get it onto the gas line. Yeah. So that's not a good idea. No, so what we're doing with the clarification agent is we're putting it intentionally down through the beer line so that it pushes into the liquid and bubbles through the liquid. Very intentional. So let me get this right. This goes on to the beer side. Yep. Okay. And uh, it's like magic. You ready? Yeah. Count of three, disappearing trick. Well, that's it. That's it. Okay. We're not done yet, though. We're not done. Okay. Really important, this uh, clarification agent does uh, kind of coagulate and gets quite sticky. So what we do is we open it up, we give it a rinse. Now I'm just gonna put a little bit more in there. Close it's it. just normal water you put. That's just water, yep. Uh, the idea again is just that we're gonna push this through and just keep everything clean. So push it through. And then what I'm doing there is I'm actually sticking my finger into the base of the beer connector there. Why? So a couple of steps from here that are important. First one is get that back down to one degree again. It's been out, it's still essentially at one degree, but we'll get it back into the fridge quickly. You've got two clarifications ideally to really get everything out of the beer that you don't want in the beer. The second clarification you can do six to 12 hours after the first one, as long as you've got that beer in a fridge that's at one or two degrees. The second clarification, uh, you, you let that run for a bit longer because it's actually really taking all the last bits out you probably want to wait 12 hours for that. So maximum you're looking at 24 hours from the time you start your clarification before you're drinking your beer. How do I know that I've got some clarification going on? So what happens is you'll see layers start to build up here. And at the moment we have a yeast layer 
and we have some fairly clear looking beer. What we'll see is we'll do a clarification and we'll see another layer of waste product start to build up and it will be a different ring, it'll be a different colour. But above that, you'll then start to see clear beer again. And when you see the clear beer, you know that that first round of clarification is completed. Then you are doing the same process again. What is the role of the butterfly valve during the clarification process? Do I leave it open? Do I close it? Uh, the answer is both. When the beer is, is fermenting, we have the butterfly clip open and the yeast falls out to the bottom. When we uh, chill the beer and we come for a clarification step, what we actually do is we close it off because when we put the clarification agent in through the beer line, we don't want to disturb any of what's there already. So we close it off, we put the clarification agent in, and importantly, after you've done the clarification, you open it again, and that's it. Thank you. Let's go, uh, let's go get this back in the cooler, Yep. and we can get ourselves a cold one. Let's do that.